Good morning, and welcome to Mount Olive's virtual service. It's been a little over a year since we've had a fully virtual service at Mount Olive, but due to the presence of some COVID cases in our community, uh, our leadership team felt it was appropriate to not meet in person today, but to have a virtual service this Sunday. I hope you enjoy it. I want to say thank you to Josh Connor and Steve Jones for their flexibility and able to come and help with this service today. Uh, we do plan to be meeting again in person next Sunday. Next Sunday is Father's Day, and we're hoping that uh, we can all meet together and celebrate Father's Day together. For our announcements today, I'd like to uh, mention that the deacon election that was scheduled for today will be held next Sunday. I know a couple of people have given me absentee ballots, but uh, feel free to uh, let me know if you want to. Uh, if you don't want to make those count and you want to vote next Sunday with us, that's fine. Or if you want to leave your absentee ballots in the box, that will be fine as well. But we will be voting uh, for the deacon election next Sunday at the end of the service. Also, wanted to mention that about the offering and tithes, uh, we we are taking online offerings. And you can also mail your offering to the church if you would like. So just want to make mention of that, that we are going to be doing the, the counting of those tithes in the next, by tomorrow so, or today. So just want to let you know that. Um, also today, the Eagle Scout Court of Honor celebration for Austin Fashi is going to be held at 2 p.m. June, today, June 13th at Hallfields Presbyterian Church in Mebbin. So we want to thank uh, his family for inviting us, but also um, Austin. It's just a celebration of his willingness and desire to be an Eagle Scout, and I think it's a great honor for him to do that. Um, our current church keys now can only be used on the front door of the main facility and in the fellowship hall. Our renovation committee and the properties committee are working to get the new keys uh, out to people soon, but as it stands right now, our older keys, the ones that we've been using, are only good to use at the front of the uh, sanctuary and in the fellowship hall. And then the last announcement that I have, uh, Memorial Homecoming Day has tentatively been rescheduled for Sunday, July 18th. That's uh, right now. Uh, we're hoping that will still move forward, but uh, just wanted to make that announcement so that we're all prepared for that. Um, there are a couple quick things too. Um, if you want to help with VBS, please see Josh Connor or myself and we can get you signed up for that. And then uh, our renovations will soon be completed. Um, and as soon as they're completed, we're going to start meeting for Sunday school at 930 and worship service at 1030. And there will also not be any Wednesday night services in June and July. At this time, I'd like to also go through our prayer list. Um, we do have quite a few on our prayer list, and we need to remember today. Uh, I understand that Jessica Moore and her family have been sick, so we want to make sure that we remember them. Hope they're feeling better. Also, Matt Wallace had surgery again this past week, and he is doing better, but we need to remember Matt. Uh, Leighton and Peggy Curl. Leighton is at home, but Peggy is still uh, rehabbing, and we want to remember both of those as they go through their uh, situation. Also, Brenda Zachary, and Chris, and Samantha Norwood, we want to remember them. Uh, they've been sick this week. And uh, also, um, Kathy Johnson's sister had passed away this past week, so we want to remember Kathy and her family as she deals with the loss of, of her sister. And last but not least, we want to remember Josh, Anna, and Judah. I understand that Josh is coming home today, so we need to remember him in our prayers. He's been pretty sick. He has been in the hospital this past week, but he is coming home today. He is feeling much better. Anna and Judah are feeling, feeling fine, but we do need to continue to remember them. At this time, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the honor and privilege of being able to meet to, together today to worship you. Lord, we know this is an unusual situation. But we thank you for the ability. We thank you for Josh Connor and for, for him working so diligently to make this service a reality. Lord, we thank you for watching over us. We know it's been a difficult couple weeks here at Mount Olive, but I pray that you'd continue to watch over our church and bless our church in a way that you'd see fit, Lord, that you would 
uh, just look after us, keep people safe. And the ones that have been mentioned today that are sick, Lord, I just pray that you'd be with each and every situation. For those that are dealing with COVID issues, Lord, I pray that you'd watch over them and just heal them in accordance to thy will. For the ones that are dealing with sickness and uh, with uh, rehab, Lord, I just pray that you'd be with each of them. Lord, just continue to bless them, heal them if it's accordance with thy will. Watch over them and grant them peace during this time. Lord, also for Kathy and her family, Lord, I just pray that you'd be with her during this time, that you would uh, grant her peace, that you'd put your arms around her and help her feel your love and compassion. And Lord, I pray that you would just watch over our congregation again, Lord, uh, watch over our community. Lord, continue to bless us and help us that we can look to you for our guidance and direction in everything that we do. Lord, help us to be good stewards of what you've given us. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen.
Well, good morning, or whatever time it is that you'll be uh, watching this. Uh, welcome to uh, Mount Olive Baptist Church. Uh, and actually, you know, it's as, as we look and as we think about it, and as I was thinking about it, you know, the topic and the sermon today, we're going to be talking about change. And actually, what better of a Sunday to talk about that whenever we're having to deal with the change. We're dealing with the change of where we're having to meet, or how we're having to meet, and things like that. And so... You know, as, as we look and as we think about this today, you know, I was just praying and about what we should do, and, you know, God led me to do this, and, you know, actually I had no idea that we were going to be doing a virtual service uh, whenever I started coming up and God gave this to me, so, but we're going to go from there. So, to start off with, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a quote from a Greek philosopher. The Greek philosopher Heraclitus said, nothing endures but change. Nothing endures but change. We live in a world where things are constantly changing, constantly in flux. Nothing stays the same. You know, we're not the same as we were five months ago. If the last 15 months have taught us anything dealing with the pandemic, it's that we should be used to change. Change is inevitable. Change is everywhere around us and has been for the past 15 months. You know, I, I think back to the early part of the pandemic to March of last year, it seemed like almost every hour something was changing. Whether it was the orders the governor was giving out, or whether it was, you know, what's going on with the virus, things like that. Everything was changing and changing at a rapid pace. Many people had to go from working in an office to working virtually from home. I remember the company I was working for, we had no virtual employees in our office. We had to send 200 people home in two weeks to work from home whenever they we didn't have the structure to work from home. And that was 
drastic and crazy. Teachers had to learn how to teach remotely, to teach virtually. And most of the teachers, if any, ever did a class on remote learning or how to teach remotely because it's a different way of teaching. It's a different way of trying to get through and connecting to your students. Students had to learn how to accept change, how to learn remotely. Once again, that's a different way. Some students excelled and did really well and did better than they would have done in person, while others struggled. Others had issues. Others may have gotten further and further behind because of it. You know, most of us crave consistency. Most of us like consistency and don't like change. But yet, the world we live in and our lives are constantly in that change, constantly in that flux. You know, cra our cravings change. The leaders of our country definitely change. Technology changes, our feelings change. So it seems like there's nothing in our lives that stays the same. But yet, that's not true for us as Christians. The truth of the matter is, is that Jesus is the same. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that's one of the verses that we're going to be reading from Hebrews chapter 13 today. Is that Jesus never changes. And despite all these things that change in our lives, the one constant that we have as Christians is that Jesus is there for us. He never changes. He doesn't waver. Nothing changes with him. So we're going to be looking at Hebrews chapter 13. These are the, this is the last chapter of the book of Hebrews. So these are the final exhortations from the author of Hebrews to, to what, how he should end his book. So we're going to be reading verses 1 through 9. Let brotherly love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Remember those who are in prison as though, as though in prison with them, and those who are mistreated, since you are also in the body. Let marriage be held in honor above all, and let the marriage bed be undefiled, for God will judge the sexual immoral, immoral and adulterous. Keep your life free from the love of money, and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do to me. Remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do not be led away by diverse and strange teachings. For it is good for the heart to be strengthened by grace, not by foods which have not benefited those devoted to them. So, as we see here, it's kind of a breakdown as in our passage where we kind of have a natural break. The first part talks about humans and us on earth and how that some things change for us. You know, it says in the beginning, let brotherly love continue. Let brotherly love continue. The truth of the matter is, is that how many times have our relationships changed? We may love someone one minute and not be so loving towards them the next. And anyone who's married can attest to that fact. Marriage is hard work. Sometimes it's easy to love your, love your kids, love your parents, love your family, love your wife, but other times it's just not. They may do something that upsets you. You know, the truth of the matter is, is that we don't even treat everyone the same. We don't treat everyone the same. There are things that we look at, whether it's external things or what they believe or things like that. We treat people differently. I remember several years ago, I was in the parking lot of Walmart, and I was going into a store. And a gentleman came up and asked me for money. He asked me for money, which, of course, you know, as, as you know, probably that happens very frequently in our society. It usually happens about a couple times a month whenever I go out. On this particular time, he said something that kind of stuck with me, and, and it kind of bothered me. It wasn't anything that I did. It was something that I think other people had done to him in the past. He said, I know you may not help me because I'm black. He had this mentality that people were not going to help him because of the color of his skin and their skin was opposite. You know, I, I gave him a couple dollars because, you know, that's, I usually don't carry a lot of money with me, but I had a couple dollars that day and I felt led to help him. But yet the truth of the matter is, is that there's many Christians out there 
who do this. They treat people differently. Maybe they look different. Maybe they, whatever the reason is, we treat people differently. But the truth of the matter is, is that we should treat everybody the same as Christians. Truth of the matter is, Jesus died for everybody. You know, we look at the song, we think about the song, Jesus Loves Me. You know, it says, you know, every color, every race, they are covered by his grace. It doesn't matter what we look like. It doesn't matter what, how our gender is or whatever it is. God loves us all the same. And we should love that as well. But yet, as humans, our relationship change. You know, we should look down on people. We see here in the passage, it talks about, you know, remember those that are in prison, Think about them. Think about what they're going through, the issues that they're having. And think about how you would feel if you were in that situation. Think about that. It says, you know, in here it also says, you know, think about those that are mistreated. The truth of the matter is, is that as Christians, we're all part of the body of Christ. And think about this. If you take a hammer and you hit your finger as hard, you hit your little pinky finger as hard as you can with a hammer, or even not even as hard, just hit it with a hammer, it's going to hurt. In the same way, we as Christians should look at other people, other Christians, other people as that. Because you know what? We're all part of the body. We're all equal. It doesn't matter how big, how small, the color of our skin, the gender we are, whatever. We're all the same in God's eyes. And that's how we should treat everybody. Next, we're going to see that not only do our relationships change, but our contentment changes. Our contentment changes. Many people in the world today, we all want to have the latest and greatest gadgets, the newest cars, the best clothes, the most in-fashion clothes, or whatever it is for you. We all have things that we, we, we desire and we go after. Maybe you want the newest Android or Apple phone, or you want the newest 8K television that you can watch the, you know, looks lifelike on there and all these vivid colors and whatever's involved in that. The biggest house, the newly and fully loaded car. Now, there's nothing wrong with having those things. But whenever that becomes your sole desire, your sole purpose, that you're not content with what you have, that you want more and more and more, and you spend that time, that becomes your idol. That becomes what you seek after more than you seek after God. You know, th th this affects me, and it affects everybody else as well. I remember whenever I got my new phone, that was like two years ago. Three months later, I wanted to get a new phone. There was nothing wrong with my phone. It worked perfectly fine. It still works fine today. But a new phone came out, and I wanted to get that. And then another new phone came out, and I wanted to get that. And we all have that, uh, that feeling. And sometimes people are, are obsessed with that. Con they're not content. That they go out and they spend money. They get in debt. They, they have to work so hard to do that. Part of our discontentment is caused, I believe, by social media. The truth of the matter is, is that in 2009... It's, they say that on each day, a person spends around 153 minutes a day on social media. That's two and a half hours of the day spent on social media. You think about it, you have Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and a billion other ones out there that you could choose from. That we see and we look at these people who have all these things, who go on these massive vacations, who have all the newest and greatest gadgets, and we want them more and more. And that's why there's, they're called, there's a, group, there's a name for that group of individuals, and it's called influencers. They want to influence people to go and get these things. You look at it, and you look at, at the massive amount of money that these people make by trying to influence people to go out and get stuff, by get things. It, makes, it creates a whole entire lack of contentment with what we have. We want what they have. We want to be like those people. We want to have what they have. You know, the truth of the matter is, is that, you know, we're not content with what we have. We seek after money. But the truth is, when we have God, we should be content. We should be happy with that. We should be happy with that. We don't need all these other things. Now, like I said, those things aren't wrong. It's, not, it's nice to have good things, but whenever that becomes your sole purpose in life, to gain these things, to have the newest phone, to have the newest car, to have the most expensive house on the block. You know, we used to call that keeping up with the Joneses. We want to have that mentality. We still have that mentality today in Christianity where people seek after those things and it affects their relationship. It affects their walk. 
with Christ. And it pulls them away. It pulls their families away. So we need to make sure that we hold on to this passage where it says you know, that God will never leave us or forsake us. No matter how little we have in the eyes of the world, God's always there for us. And he's going to be there for us no matter what. So we've seen the dangers of following after the wrong things, but who should we follow? You know, who, who should we follow? You know, in verse 7 it says, Remember your leaders, those who have spoken the word of God. Consider the outcome of their life and imitate their faith. Who should we be imitating? We all want to be like somebody. We all want to be like someone else. You know, my son wants to be like me. My daughter wants to be like my wife. Random kids may want to be like you. It, it, it's all, it's how it, the world is. We all want to be like someone else. But who you imitate can a lot of times affect who you become as a person. It can affect your walk with Christ. We need to follow leaders who are going to stay true to the word of God, who are going to guide us in the right direction and put us in places and take us to places that will affect our relationship with God in a positive way. You know, too many times as Christ Christians, we fall into those, the, the world of following those influencers, following those people who are going to take us in a negative direction. But yet, we need to learn from men and women who have never turned away from God despite what was going along with them. Those Christians who were who've been persecuted for their faith. Men and women who have not changed the message of the Bible to be popular, but have stayed true to it. So many people are unfortunately willing to change the gospel, change the word of God to be popular, to not hurt people's feelings. You know, I personally know a pastor and several pastors who won't preach on certain topics in the Bible, whatever it may be, because there are people in their congregation whose family members are dealing with that sin. And he won't preach against it because it may hurt their feelings. That's not what we need. We need men and women who are going to stay true to the Bible, who preach the Bible for what it says. So we can go out and defend our faith. That's what we need. And we also need to follow people who practice what they preach. So often today, we say one thing, and we go and we do something that's completely different. We do something that's completely opposite to what we say. You know, it's easy for us to say something, but doing it's a completely different, different way, different. I can sit here and say that I can go out and break down the engine in my car and put it back together in 30 minutes. Well, the truth of the matter is, it probably would take days for me to do that if I were even able to do that. I'm not very mechanically inclined. But I can say whatever I want to. But following through and doing it is different. That's what we need. We need to follow men and women who are going to practice and whose lifestyles follow what they preach. You know, how many times do we see pastors or, or preachers or leaders in the church who fall into these sexual sins, but they didn't just fall into them one day and then get caught? They've been doing them for years. You know, we see stories every once in a while where maybe they've been doing this for 20 years. They've had an affair. They've been saying one thing, but living a different way. Those aren't the men and women that we need to follow. We need to follow men and women who are going to practice what you preach. We need to follow men that we can emulate in our faith, that we can imitate their faith. So many times we, we, we follow people and, and Christians who, you know, maybe, you know, we shouldn't. We follow people who are going to change the Bible. We need to find good leaders in our church and follow them. Be like them. You know, there are many church leaders out there who we can look up to and guide us for. They may not be the most popular, but yet they're good, godly men and women that we can learn from. And those are the ones that we should imitate. We should imitate those that, are going to follow, that we can follow a godly example for. You know, we all look up to someone in our lives. You know, back in the 80s and 90s, I remember there's a bit, their commercial for Gatorade was, I want to be like Mike. You know, you want to be like Michael Jordan. I mean, I, I can't tell you, it wasn't just Gatorade, it was everything. You know, he, he, sometimes he stuck his tongue out whenever he went and did a layup or whatever. I had friends that would emulate that whenever they were out there. They wanted, people wanted to drink Gatorade because they wanted to be like Michael Jordan. They thought, oh, this is cool. I can drink the same drink that Michael Jordan does. You know, that's awesome, that's cool. You know, there's no telling how many bottles of Gatorade were sold because of that. And it's not exclusive to Michael Jordan. 
There are so many celebrity endorsements out there, it's not even funny right now. Every commercial you see, it seems like you see someone popular on there trying to sell the product because of their name. Because of their name. You know, it's important for us to look up to people who are Christians. Those are the people we need to emulate. We don't need to be emulating Michael Jordan. We need to be emulating men and women of the faith who have stayed true to the word, who preach the gospel day in, day out. Not only preach it, but they live it. Those are the men and women. They, like I said, they may not be the most popular, but these are the men and women that are going to grow us closer to God. Closer to God. Those are the men and women that we need to emulate. And then we come to the passage today in chapter 8, in verse 8, excuse me, where it says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus was the same in the past. He was the same when he lived. And he's the same today. He's the same today. Think about this. Just think about our lives. How different we are from 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago. I know for me, the, the, the older I get, the harder it is for me to even do things. I mean, it's harder for me to do things now than it was 10 years ago when I was in my late 20s. It's more challenging. I, my, my back hurts more. I mean, I used to go out and move furniture all day. I could take a heavy washer and dryer up three flights of stairs in an apartment, no problem, and not be sore. If I did that today, I would be sore for weeks. We all change. Fashions change. Hair designs change. But Jesus is constant. There's no change. His message hasn't changed. Nothing he has done has changed. Because we think of change as part of our lives, it's hard for us to imagine, I think, Jesus and the message of the Bible being the same as it was 2,000-ish plus years ago that it was written. It's hard for us to understand that. Unfortunately, there are many today in our society who try to change what the Bible says. The truth of the matter is, is that if something's a sin in the Bible, if there's a sin in the Bible, it's a sin today. We don't think about that. We don't think that, you know, the God who told the nation of Israel to go and take the promised land and utterly destroy everyone there is the same God that sacrificed his life for us on Calvary. But it is. Jesus never changed. The message is the same. The message is the same in the Bible because you know what? God has never changed. Its author has never changed. The Bible is God's word literally breathed out. That's what inspired literally means. It's breathed out. It's God breathed. It's breathed out by God to people who are inspired to write it, to the authors that wrote it. You know, too many people try to put down these biblical principles and they try to be popular. They try to be relevant. They try to be politically correct or, or whatever term you want to use to say that. But the Bible is as relevant to us in 2021 as it was to the nation of Israel in the Old Testament, as it was to the first century Jews, to the first century church. It's just as relevant when it was written as it is today. And what's a sin in the Bible is a sin for us today. It's a sin for us today. You know, we can't allow our beliefs to be changed because of the world because of what the world says, because of what the world thinks. We, we can't change that. It, it's, it's, it's hard for us to picture someone who doesn't change their beliefs over the years. We see this time and time again, and not just in the political realm where politicians will say one thing to get elected, and then they'll change their beliefs once they get elected to something else. The Bible never changes. Even though we change, our beliefs change, the Bible is the one constant that we can follow. It's kind of like if you think about it, it's a, it, when you're talking about a compass. A compass should always, always points north. The Bible is our compass in life. As long as we stay aligned with it, it will guide us in the right way that we need to go. It will guide us to where we need to be. It will guide us to the beliefs that we need to be and need to have in our lives. So the Bible never changes and is the same. 
And the Bible can't mean something different today than what it meant when it was written. And that's what we're going to talk about next. We're going to talk about how important it is for us to know what we believe and why we believe it. I think this is a big issue for us in, in our Christianity today. We, we don't know what we believe. We don't take the time to spend time to be in the word, to understand it. We listen to these leaders, these Christian people, men and women who take what the Bible says and they add something to it. They change it they, to, to stay relevant, to stay popular. You know, don't be swayed from your beliefs. If you know what you believe, it's more difficult to be swayed from it. It's more difficult for you to be swayed from it. It's important for you to know how that, but also how to defend your belief. How to understand, know that. You know, we, you just can't sit here and go to someone and say, well, why do you believe that as a Christian? To say, because my mom and dad do, isn't a valid reason. You need to know it for yourself, why you believe. You need to be able to go to the Bible and say, I believe it because here's what it says in the Bible. It says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And since he's the same, the Bible is the same since he breathed it out. He inspired it. There are many churches who are so carried away by doctrines that just sway people. They, they, they add things to the Bible. They change what the Bible says. You know, we need to know what we believe so we're not swayed. You know, whenever we think about it, if you know and you're certain about something, you're not swayed from it. You're not swayed from it. If you know something's wrong, nothing is going to sway you from that being wrong. If you believe something and you just stay to it, you believe it's right. Unfortunately, there are still many Christians out there who are infants in their faith. They haven't grown. You know, like a baby. A baby, you don't, you don't start feeding a baby steak, right? You can't feed a, a one-year-old, six-month-old, a steak. Well, you can, but they don't have the teeth to chew it. They don't have the ability to digest it. They don't have the knowledge about what they need to do to be able to chew it up and swallow it properly. You have to give them milk. Too many Christians are still in their milk phase of their Bible knowledge. They haven't delved in. They haven't grown to become a disciple who goes out and makes more disciples. That's our ultimate goal in Christianity, is to become disciples who go out and make more disciples. But we're still in the phase where we don't understand basic things in the Bible. And that's why Bible study is so important. That's why it's important for us to go. Christians should grow and mature in their faith. You know, it's unfortunate that so many young people leave our churches, go out the front doors once they graduate, go to college, and never step back foot in our churches again. The statistic says that 66% of all those who graduate high school that grew up in church and go away to college never step back foot, never step a foot back in church again. Now, that doesn't mean that they may not come back at some point later, but it's a while. They get away from their faith. They go, to, they go to these colleges. They go to these universities where these people are very dogmatic. They know what they believe and why they believe it. And it goes opposite of the Bible. Then they're swayed by these teachings. They're so easily swayed by this. That's why it's important for us to grow our faith while we're young so that our kids know what they believe and why they believe it, so they can go out and defend their faith. There are too many people out there that come up with these new interpretations of what a passage says. Well, you know, be wary of anyone who says that. Because if you have a new interpretation, then you may be twisting the Bible. You know, maybe it's, you know, it's challenging for us to think about that. You know, one reason so many people are drawn in by these teachings is there's some truth in them. There's a little nugget of truth in there that pulls you away from it. If you look at materials for like Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, other religions like that, there's some little truth in there that's similar to what we believe. That if you're, if you're not sure of what you believe, if you don't know what you believe and are ready to defend your faith, you can get pulled in to those so easily and pulled away from Christianity. So just be careful, because the Bible hasn't changed. 
an important thing for us to do, and the reason why we need to know the Bible, is because we need to match up what the Bible says to what the pastor says. Whether it's me, Josh, or whatever pastor you're listening to on the radio, on the TV, or whoever it is, match up what they say to what the Bible says. And if it goes against what the Bible says, don't, don't follow them. Don't, don't, don't follow after them. Follow after someone who stays true to the Bible. That's why it's so important for us to be that and be ready to defend your faith. Here in 2020, we have so many people who are getting drawn away because we can't defend our faith. We don't know why we believe what we believe. So we just sit back and listen to other people and then get swayed. Be ready to come back with reasons as to why you believe this, what's going on. You know, if we're going to share our faith with others, we're commanded by the Great Commission that we need to know what the Bible says. It says, go therefore and teach all nations. In order to teach, you have to know what the Bible says. Now, that doesn't mean that if you don't know, you still, you're not responsible for going and telling people. You still are. But if you don't know, take a time. If they say, well, well why, why is this? Don't just say, I don't know. Say, you know what? Let me look into that. Go find somebody to be able to help you. You know, the world around us is, is, so, is so vast. You see the Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses, mentioning them again. They're out everywhere. Everywhere. I mean, I was in the Philippines, and I saw them. I wasn't in Manila, Quezon City, the big cities, and saw them. I was in a small little city, small little town, on a small little island in southern Philippines. And they were out, going to people, going door to door. They were out on their bicycles. The Mormons were telling people about Christ to try to get them to, to convert, to tell them about their Christ. They spend hours learning their sets of beliefs to be able to defend it, to be able to come back to the reasons why people might give. You know, while, while by no means do I endorse Jehovah's Witness and Mormons, I think we can learn from their methods of training. They're prepared to go out. They take the time to learn, to be able to defend their faith. They know why, what they believe and why they believe it. But yet so many of us in our churches and Baptist churches today don't understand the Bible. We, we, we don't know. We, we say, oh, here, here's what's going on. We couldn't tell if that was something from the Bible or something from something else. We have to be ready as Christians to share our faith. We never know when those opportunities are going to come so that we can share our faith and bring others to Christ. You know, we live in a world where change is inevitable. Change is everywhere. People change. Beliefs change. But yet, Jesus remains the same. So, so a, a, as we you know, come to this point, let me, let me ask you some questions. Are you content with your life? Are you content with Jesus being there for you, that he's never going to leave you and forsake you? Are you seeking after the things of the world? Do you seek after so much after the things that are in the world that you stop following Christ, you stop seeking after Christ and follow only the things of the world? Who are you following? Who do you want to be like? Do you want to be like the most popular pop music star, most popular rap, rap musician? Or do you want to be like a Man, man and woman of Christ who's followed Christ for years. Who do you want to be like? We need to be more like Christ and less like Mike. And then finally, are you ready? Are you ready to share your beliefs with others? Are you ready to go out into the world and tell others about Christ? Are you content to be back and be swayed by some teaching that may have a speck of truth in it but it's mostly lies. I want to encourage you today to follow Christ, to know what God says. And if you don't know Christ as your personal Savior, if you haven't accepted him yet, now's the time to come to him. Reach out to us. Reach out to me. Re go to our website. Reach out to me or Josh or whoever, and we will help you along the way. We'll help you find Christ. We'll help you learn more about Christ as you go throughout your walk so that you can go and defend your faith. Let's pray. Dear Father, we thank you for this good day. 
and for this time that we have to come and to, to study your word. And Lord, help us to remember that you are always the same. Nothing changes with you. Lord, help us to stay true to what you've said. Stay true to the Bible. Stay true to your truths. Not change them, Lord. And help us to be able to discern right from wrong. Be able to discern what the Bible says from what the world says, Lord, and to stay true to your word above all else. And just help us to go throughout this week, Lord, to do everything to your honor and to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.